We challenged people across the country to learn guitar in 60 days with Rocksmith. Here's what happened. Oh, wait, I should probably turn it up, huh? No. <laughs> it actually tracks every note you play. And as you totally nail each section, it gets harder. They've got like hundreds of songs from so many bands. The fact that you're plugging in a real guitar is awesome. I can't even imagine being where I am in such a short time. Rocksmith costs way less than any private lessons you can do. On day 60, I've got awesome guitar riffs that I can pull out anytime. I feel like I'm a guitar player now. The all new Rocksmith 2014 edition, the fastest way to learn guitar. Start your 60 day challenge today at rocksmith.com. Rated T for Teen. Hey everybody and welcome to Rocksmith Encore. My name is Dan Amrick. I am your community developer, but I am not the star today. Today it is Brian Pody here Hello. in the flesh as promised. So we've, we get a lot of requests for different things to cover on Rocksmith Encore. If this is your first Rocksmith Encore, you need to know that this is where we sort of cut loose a little bit. Normally every Thursday here on Twitch, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. GMT, we would normally just play songs from this week's DLC. Uh, and Rocksmith Encore is a chance for us to branch out from that uh, to cover topics that people are interested in about guitar or about Rocksmith or about guitar playing uh, that aren't necessarily the kind of things that we would cover in that kind of structured show. One of the things that Brian brought up earlier this year, back in like March, yeah, I think. pretty early. We started thinking about things that we'd like to do. Oh, what's the, what's the coolest thing we could do on, on Encore? What's something we would never be able to do? And he's like, well, I, I can completely disassemble, reassemble, <laughs> and upgrade one of the guitars that's already in the office. And I know that we get a lot of people asking, you know, how do you, where do you get more information about how to work on my guitar? We have people that are afraid to change their strings because it's just such a new process to them. We want to make you less scared of that. Pody, of course, is treating that headache with a lobotomy. He has completely <laughs> disassembled a guitar. So today, this is part one of three. Today, your plan is how to assemble a guitar, what That's all the right. parts do. But this is really the anatomy lesson. Yeah, this is, let's just start from more or less scratch everything's taken apart and let's just put it all back together worst case you get a box full of guitar parts yeah. now you're going to find out how they all go together so we'll start with that uh in two weeks we'll do part two of this uh on monday september 11th where you're going to talk about upgrading we've got mm -hmm. some special parts that you're going to retrofit so if you have a guitar that you're like gee i like this but i don't like the pickups or these tuners seem to be slipping how do you upgrade that stuff how do you fix that stuff Pody will cover that and then yeah. finally at the end of the month, the last Monday of September, we're going to do how to set up the guitar, that's setting the action, adjusting the truss rod, all of the scary stuff that you would normally ask uh, somebody at your local guitar store to do for 75 bucks. Hopefully we can save you that money with just this free stream. Yeah, and a lot of that stuff is definitely stuff that you can do. Yeah, don't be afraid. Again, these streams are going to be archived, so if you don't get your answer... Uh, you don't get questions answered uh, live. Don't worry, we can follow up with you. Uh, I am going to be trying to, to gauge the chat room live. There should also be some helpful folks in the chat room. Uh, and of course, we have uh, Travis on the camera. Do you want to show Travis? This is Travis. Travis is here hey, everyone. <laughs> at the board. This is the Wheels of Steel. This is the <laughs> new upgraded Wheels of Steel of yep. which we have spoken. Travis is also, in addition to doing all that stuff, going to try to keep up with the chat. We may not get all of your names correct. We may not get everybody's uh, comments correct, but he's sitting mm -hmm. on Rocksmith Game in the chat room. So am I on my iPad. So uh, you'll be talking to either one of us through that. But there's yep. also supposed to be anybody else that had free time from our, our team today was going to volunteer some time uh, to try to answer some of the questions that we might not be able to hear or get directly. So uh, this will be, I mean, we've wanted to do this for a long time. We've done it all the the, uh, the the prep that I think we can possibly do. We've got a three camera shoot. We're here. Yeah, we're here. So <laughs> let's guitar taken apart. Let's do it. Also, there will be freebies uh, in our chat room. Our friend Black Widow is uh, is here. That's Tawny. She's our community manager, our community representative, and she has free codes to give away. And she's allowed to do that whenever the heck she wants. So weapons free to Tawny. Uh, if you're curious and you want to get just some free Steam DLC for Rocksmith Remastered. Uh, you can uh, keep an eye on the chat. She will announce that. It's at her discretion. Treat her with utmost respect. And then, uh, yeah, she's got, uh, I think, three packs of three codes each for three different uh, packs in our library. So if you just came for the free stuff, you're going to get that too. But mostly, hopefully, you're here for the wisdom. Yes, Travis, do you have a, a question? Hey, sorry, I don't mean to butt in. Uh, Please do uh, butt uh, in. Right now, but... Um 
Uh, we're getting uh, reports uh, live from the stream that uh, we are hearing some mic dropouts. Um, so, Dan, I'm muting you. What I want you to do is I want you to take off your pack, and I want you to just just give that, that cable a little jiggle, make sure it's really in there. Um, oh, it's really in there. And the to our viewers at home, uh, we are trying out new things, and yep. there's going to be a little trial and error. Uh, keep your feedback positive and informative, and we will <laughs> do everything we can to follow the suit. Okay, and you're if back you live. have questions, um, try to call out at Rocksmith Games so it's easier for us to see them in the chat log. That's very true. That helps a great deal. And also, Travis, if, if we need to, I've got, yeah. I've got our old trusty headsets here. I'm not going to be moving very much, so I'm happy to switch over to that if it becomes a problem. So yeah, we have awesome. backup. Um, so where yeah. do you want to start? Let's dive in. Let me preface this by saying I wouldn't normally put a guitar together with a drill, but we've got an hour, so... <laughs> We're going to do it quickly. All right. I, I spent some time thinking about what's the best place to start in putting this together. And, you know, there's this, like, obvious connection of, well, the neck goes into the body, right? Maybe. It should fit in there. Yeah, I, I, I'd like eventually. to. There seems to be um, a place for it to go. Yeah. But if I did that first, I'd have this giant unwieldy thing that would be really difficult to work with. So I think we'll leave that fun little piece for last. So... I'm going to start with the neck, and why not start with the tuners? Um, these tuners are kind of the vintage style that have these press-in bushings. Okay. Tuners kind of come in, we can go to that close-up cam and I can show people these bushings. Now, the, the holes that are drilled for tuners are generally different sizes, right? Like, there's, there's a few standard sizes, but you do need to measure if you're getting new tuners to make sure that you have the right size for the right hole, or you have to be willing to drill out or ream out a little bit more wood from your headstock. Right, so they definitely come in two, two varieties. There's the uh, vintage tuners, which typically are about an eight millimeter hole. And then there's the modern tuners, which are a 10 millimeter hole. So if you are going from a modern tuner to another modern tuner, you're probably gonna be fine. Tilt it down a little bit on uh, the camera there. Oh, yeah, there right. we go. I'm not looking at what camera I'm on. <laughs> if, <laughs> Sorry. If you are... Ask me to get you things, too, because I'm just standing here going, uh-huh, like a good <laughs> host. If you're going from a vintage tuner to a vintage tuner, you're going to be fine. It's when you're going from a vintage tuner, which is 8 millimeters, to a modern tuner, which is 10 millimeters, uh -huh. that you're going to have to start drilling things out. Now... There are ways around that. Um, there's, there's some conversion bushings out there that various companies make. I think Guitar Fetish is one of the places where you can get those. Those are typically actually just to go from a modern tuner to a vintage tuner, though, because those are the ones that use bushings. A lot of the modern tuners where the bushing would be actually screws in. And the tuners that we will be replacing these with next time are that type that screw in. Okay. And I don't know. Those are nice. They're solid. The tuners we're going to be replacing these with are the type that I really like and I tend to put on guitars. And they're reasonably priced. These tuners, I will admit, are not the best. It's well, yeah, we should establish that we're, we're starting with a guitar that uh, is a very reasonable... Uh, introductory price kind of guitar. I've, I've oh, looked yeah. at these. These are about 150 bucks. Yeah, you might be able to occasionally find it on sale for 99 Or even maybe. less if you get it from somebody's closet at a yard sale. I mean, this is right. the kind of guitar that, quite honestly, you know, the cheaper the guitar, the easier it is to get going, but sometimes they hurt when you play them. Sometimes they're just not high enough quality that makes you want to stick with the hobby. So these, this is very common, but there are, the whole point of doing this is so that you can see that there are ways that you can upgrade this guitar uh, over time and make it into something that makes it a lot more interesting. Travis has a question for us. Ooh. Hey, how's it going? Hi, it's um, going great, Travis. Back, how's back life over there on the steel? board? I'm about to bring it. It's really good. Um, so uh, we've got a couple questions I wanted to ask you guys. I'm yeah? going to turn down Cody's mic while he's <laughs> Um DK Corby asks, uh, how do you make an informed choice on upgrading a guitar without testing the gear on exactly your type of guitar? That is where the internet comes in. Uh, you're right, DK. There's a, uh, 
there is a, uh, a major risk there. Uh, this is why you will find oodles and oodles and oodles of individual opinions on the internet of people going, yeah, I tried those tuners, they're terrible. Oh, really? I tried those tuners, they've been rock solid and they're better than the ones that you're telling people to do. There is always going to be some, uh, some risk in that regard. Uh, you can find, I mean, you honestly, you can go crazy looking at all the different internet communities that talk about gear. Some of them uh, go very, very deep. Some of them are extremely helpful. Some of them it, it, are not. It, it, it comes down to kind of doing your best guess uh, look at the gear, go by reputation, go by obviously user reviews for any, any sites, any retailer sites, because those are inevitably uh, written by people who already own the gear. Uh, but yeah, there, unfortunately there is, there is risk. There are of course big name brands that help. Yeah. All Parts is very common, mm -hmm. Stu Mac is very common. Planet Waves, I have some of their stuff on my gear at home. Mm -hmm. uh, for pickups, it's like uh, DeMarzio and, and uh, uh, Seymour Duncan, uh, Seymour Duncan the, is probably... The big boys. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's also little boutique places like Bare Knuckle and... Uh, oh, yeah. You know what, where I've found that I like a lot of the uh, guitar parts that I didn't expect I would is guitarfetish.com. I don't know if, you've, if yeah, you feel um, that way. Uh, this guy, he, I mean, he gets his stuff from China, but he mm -hmm. kind of cuts out the middleman. Yeah, it's all very reasonably priced, and it's because good quality it's, for the money. Because it's reasonably priced, it's something you can kind of experiment with, right? Which is nice. I, I um, went on a bender on pedals last year, and yeah. I picked up some pedals from him because they were only fifty bucks a piece. But they're the kind of pedals that you would pay a hundred or one hundred and twenty dollars for mm -hmm. from other places. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't regret that. So there yeah. is going to be trial and error. That's the the short version. Yeah, especially with pickups. Um, so yeah. Yeah, Travis, you had another one, and I want to talk about what you're doing here because you've moved on from the neck. I, it didn't take long to get this all together. Yeah. So, so you. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, oh, there yeah, we go. So many cameras. Sorry, we've got. We've that, got that's cool. fine. We're, we're zooming around. So you put all six tuners back on, and then you also put on these little things that we call string trees. Those are string trees, and I hate string trees. I really, really dislike them because they're uh, just another point of friction that makes the guitar go out of tune. Well, the goal of the string tree is when you when you put the strings back on. Uh, they hold them down a little bit. They create some downward pressure behind right. the nut. Right. And that's supposed to keep them from, uh, from breaking or, uh, or to keep the, them from going out of tune. It, it definitely doesn't keep them from going out of tune. So the issue is because your high E especially is so far away from the nut, if you don't pull the string down closer to the headstock with the string tree, when you bend the string, it can actually pop out of the nut altogether. So the string tree is there to hold the string down so there's more of a break angle. So there's more downward pressure on the string. That's why you don't have it on the low E or the A, but you start getting it. them right. on the higher strings. Uh, but, you know, it's not 1957 yeah. anymore. So we have things called staggered tuners these days where the tuners get lower and lower closer to the headstock as they go up. And with staggered tuners, you don't need string trees. You can totally okay. get I've away always, with them. I've actually always wondered why some headstocks have string trees or string guides. Mm -hmm. And you'll see different variations on this. These are very basic sort of vintage versions. It's basically just a little piece of metal that's curved and the string tucks underneath it. But I've also seen mm -hmm. roller ones and I've seen yeah. just cleaner versions of this design and stuff like that. Yeah, so there's, there's lots of different things trying to keep the strings from going out of tune here, which is why you get the roller ones and the Teflon ones. But right. Ideally, you can just get rid of them all together. With if high you, enough quality tuners. Yeah, if you use uh, uh, staggered tuners. So okay. that's what we'll be doing next time. But for today, we're putting those original ones back on. Um, so you've moved on to the bridge. I Unless, have. Travis, do you have anything? I'll, I'll check the chat here, too. But no, we're good? All uh, right. No, uh, 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 some people were asking uh, if we were going to see you uh, block the tremolo. I'm not um, going to block it. Um, this. Hmm. Especially with a vintage trim like this, you know, you just pull it hard against the body and the guitar is not going to go out of tune. Yeah, for people that don't know what that is, blocking a tremolo, uh, you know, the, the fender design of tremolos uh, is on a, a, a fulcrum and it goes a little bit up and a little bit down. It's supposed to sort of float in between so that you could either raise or lower the pitch depending mm -hmm. on how you move that bar. Yeah, it's really more of a vibrato. Like, this You're is right, not it's a vibrato arm. For Huge dive bombs or that sort of thing. It's 
it's more for just the tasty little vibrato like you're gonna hear in and surf, surf music guitar. or yeah, yeah. just. But some people, like myself, hate <laughs> that. And uh, what I do is I just put all of the springs that are associated with that assembly, and we'll get to that later. Uh, I put all of them on, create maximum tension, and just what I've heard it called decking it. You just slap it down onto the deck. Um, you can also insert a block of wood that is like a little wedge that goes between the bridge and the body of the guitar uh, in the back so that you can increase resonance and it will keep it, you, you cannot move it after that point. Uh, or you can only move it down a little bit. No, I guess if you do it right, you shouldn't be able to move it. No. It, um, yeah, so. Eric Clapton famously likes exactly, all of his Exactly, I was going to say. Uh, blocked. Clapton did a lot of that. So in the hole back here, you just stick a block of wood between the, the tremolo block and the back of the guitar, and then it can't move either way. The thing is, if you throw five springs in there, it's not going to go anywhere anyway. Right. It basically does the same thing. It immobilizes it. Yeah. And you know, with five springs on it, uh, as long as you set it up right, you can do dive bombs if you want. But you it's kind of it's. I mean, you really have to push it. And uh, and again, if that's stylistically something that you want to do, great. But I, I find that easier than actually. I've, if all the guitars that I own, and I, I like the Fender design, so I have a lot of that. I have uh, several hardtails, which is not even a tremolo at all. It just you know the strings go through the body, and mm -hmm. there you go. It's just a yeah. different design. Uh, but to sort of get that hardtail feeling on a on a trim, you would block it or you would deck it. Yeah. So, Travis has another. Oh, he does. Uh, one one, uh, one more question before we move on to the next bit. Sure. Uh, I think uh, Pody, if you could let us know what makes a good tuner. What makes a good tuner? Uh, high ratio. So a high ratio tuner, you have to physically turn the peg more times to get the string to wind around, but that makes the tuner more accurate. Good tuners are going to be 18 to 1 or 20 to 1. You probably don't want like a 14 to 1 tuner because those just aren't quite accurate enough. I really like locking tuners. I would spring for locking tuners. I put them on everything um, to, to call out something specific. Sure. I really like the hip shot grip lock tuners. That's what I put on all my guitars. I've bought a lot of those. Uh, they're reasonably priced. They're cheaper than a lot of other aftermarket tuners, and they're probably the best ones out there. You're seeing a lot of um, signature model guitars start to come with those because mm. people are starting to figure out that that's really where it's at. So that's what I would do if you're looking to spend a little less money. As Dan said, yeah. Guitar Fetish has some some decent stuff There's a, in that price range. This is a good point to bring or up that less. when you start upgrading a guitar, you can get into like spending ridiculous amounts of money, way more than the guitar is actually probably worth investing in. Um, I swapped my tuners to locking tuners. I got the Planet Waves tuners, and they were 50 mm -hmm. bucks. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty low as locking tuners go. Uh, generally, the ones you're talking about are probably closer to 100, 100 60. Oh, they're only 60. Yeah. Oh, okay. 57 to 60 dollars. You mean there's cheaper than 50 dollars for locking tuners now? Well, they're they're like 60 bucks. Wow. Okay. And they're so, locking and they're staggered. So for this type of guitar, they're perfect. But consider, OK, $60 for tuners. Say you want to upgrade your pickups, and you want to go with a big brand like EMG or Seymour Duncan. You could easily be looking at 100 to $150 for a set of pickups. Yeah, what if more. your guitar was $150 to begin with? You've just dropped $200 into a $150 guitar. Yeah, if, if you really like it, though. May yeah, maybe know, if, if it's sentimental or if you like everything else about it but these little things, or if you're just willing to invest in trying stuff. Remember, you can always pull the parts back out and put them into something else. How many sure. boxes do you have at home of spare guitar parts? Uh, <laughs> of, I, of have, like... I have an entire guitar in my shed along <laughs> with a body and like no two other bodies and several necks. Uh, so I have a lot of guitar parts. Fair enough. At the house. Um, you know, and stuff that I'll get around to doing something with eventually. Uh, Travis, if we can go yeah, to so you've... this cam here, I just wanted to show a little pro tip. Um, so what I've done is I've left out the two center screws in the six screw trim. That's a pretty common mod. Uh, Andy Timmons is somebody who I've Ooh. seen do this. And it's funny, I saw somebody ask him, so why, I've noticed you're missing two screws. Why is that? And he's like, oh, uh, this is the way the custom shop set it up for me. It just never had them. 
Interesting. So do you know, I mean, what is what is the benefit? Does it make the, the trap idea, a little looser? Yeah, it's just less friction. OK. You know, less less points for things to get caught up. So hopefully it will come back to tune better, because that's always going to be Now, you've issue. still got some, some wiggle here on this. And you've, mm -hmm. are these, should these be all the way in? Or should no, they be a little bit out? No, if you screw them all the way in. It doesn't move. Oh. It does that. OK, that's terrible. Because the, the back end kicks up. Yeah, the front of the tremolo is a wedge. Right. And that's why you can dip down on it is because it's it's wedge shaped. So okay. if you don't leave any wiggle room, it's not going to work. It's, it's that, gonna no, that's, be, a, that's important to know. It's going to be stuck <laughs> in an odd position and it just won't do anything. Um, I'm going to I'm going to move on. OK, because we've got electronics to put in. And honestly, that's probably the most time consuming part. For me, most of the time, is getting all the electronics put in and hooked up, especially on one of these guitars. You've got three pickups to wire up. <laughs> and I did unwire the pickups. I could have left them in. So you can actually get uh, pick guards pre-wired. I mean, this doesn't really happen on yeah. Gibson-style guitars with, uh, with humbuckers. I actually, <laughs> it's full, full disclosure time, I had a, a guitar with a single humbucker and a one volume knob. Like, right, this is the easiest possible yeah. configuration. I still screwed it up. Like, I, I knew what, what color wires did what, and I followed instructions from the internet and from the manufacturer, and I still had to wind up taking it to uh, my friend Greg uh, oh, yeah, it, from it, Orbiter Guitars to it do. It takes time to figure all that stuff oh. out, you know. Even, even when you've got all the literature, you know, if that solder joint's bad, it's just, it's And not I was work. doing the soldering, so it was a bad solder. I mean, that is what it came down to. But if you want to replace this entire pick guard, you can get them pre-installed. They're called pre-wired pick, uh, pick guards, generally. Right. Uh, and they've already got everything set up. You'll still need to solder a couple of things, but the individual uh, pickups and the switches that, uh, that control them and also the uh, potentiometers, the volume knobs, uh, the volume pots and the tone pots are already set up for you. So if you're not into that aspect of it, if you're not electronically inclined and you don't want this part of the challenge, uh, you know, it, it's not really that much more than a full set of pickups to get a full set of pickups pre-installed. Right, and most of that stuff. work's been done. Um, but Cody likes to do everything. I do. So well, you just ripped it all out, man. I like I like to make my own pickups. I think pickups are really interesting and fun. Travis, you have a question, and can yes. we go? I think this uh, this, this is a too. question from the uh, the audience. Uh, okay. Really ties in right now. Um, just wondering, is Brian self-taught, or was huh. he? Uh, did he learn from a luthier? This is from a uh, Norwegian herring. Uh, I I am totally self-taught. Um, so when I was a teenager, I just started going to semi-local guitar shops and I'd just buy cheap guitars that looked terrible and sounded terrible and played terrible and you know I just put some some work into them and tried to make them not terrible and that's really how I learned and there was sort of this concept of well there's nothing to lose because this started out terrible I can't make it any worse than it already is and I really learned a lot. And you said, I'll take that as a challenge. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, I ended up with a lot of firewood. No. Uh, I, I ended up with a lot of guitars that I really liked that didn't cost me much money. And you kind of have this sense of ownership of that instrument because you put in the time and you put in the work and made it work and made it into something that worked for you. Because right. Because I know, personally, I like very specific things in guitars. And I've come to find this, that Pretty much anything I buy off the shelf, I'm not going to like it as it came to me. I'm going to want to mess around with it. Like started to get picky that way, too. Like, yeah. oh, this will be great, but I am going to change A, B, and C. And my wife goes, then why are you getting I'm like, oh, because everything else is exactly the way I want it. But I, I know my, this about myself, and so I want to yeah. change. So that's why I'm trying to learn. I'm hoping osmosis just works. But yeah. that's why I'm trying to learn these little tweaks so that I can be like, pfft. It's exactly what I want after a weekend, and hopefully it would be fun mm -hmm. to upgrade mm -hmm. those parts. Yeah, so like my, my Les Paul that used to be on the stream with me a lot, um, I actually never plugged that guitar in before I ripped all the electronics out of it, and I took all the hardware off of it except for the tuners. 
because I knew I just wanted something different. And we were talking about pickups just a few minutes ago, and I think I, I have the luxury of building them myself, so you know the, the cost is pretty minimal. But I went through something like eight pickups before you, on that guitar before right. I figured out what really worked on that particular guitar. So that wasn't like building the, the pickup and breaking it or doing something wrong with it. It's just it wasn't giving you the sound that you were looking for. Yeah, I, I built it. I put quick connectors quick disconnects, on, sure. on my pickups. Uh, I use the same ones that Gibson does because they're just Molex connectors. Um, and then you just unscrew the pickup. You can pop it out and put a new one in. Uh, which is very nice if you're going through eight pickups on a single guitar. <laughs> it makes it a lot faster. Um, but it's, it's a lot of trial and error, or it can be. I mean, the other thing these days is YouTube. There's a right. lot of There's great so much more information now than there was even 10 years ago on how to do this stuff. You look up just about any modification to a guitar you want, and you'll find at least one video on it in most cases. Mm -hmm. Uh, real quick, I want to point out something that you're doing here. So uh, when, when he put the, the pickups in, uh, in between the pickup and the plastic pick guard, there's a spring on each one of these screws. That's yeah. because... If we can go to this. Uh, yeah, this that will... I left one out so we could talk oh, a little yeah. bit about it specifically. This lets you adjust the height of the pickup. This is sometimes a rocksmith issue, too, because occasionally we'll say, if people will say, the guitar doesn't hear me on all the, all the strings. Uh, or like it, I, it, it detects my notes fine on the high E, but not on the low E. And sometimes we'll say, well, are your pickups close enough? Now, David Stevens has a video on our YouTube channel where he shows you how to adjust on an Epiphone Les Paul Jr. But this is the uh, Stratocaster single coil, single coil version of that. Uh, there's a screw, Oops. and a screw goes through the pick guard, and a spring goes around that screw before the screw plugs into the pick, the the the, uh, the pickup itself. So that's what Pody is sort of scrambling with here. I'm attempting to <laughs> make it visible here. It's important not to leave these screws out or to lose these these springs. Sorry, the springs are the problem because the springs uh, then let you make adjustments later on. You can adjust one half of the pickup and not the other so that you can have, if you want stronger pull or, or more volume out of your lower strings, you can you can tilt that pickup using those springs. Yeah, what you got, Trav? And that works. Um, I got a, a couple really questions well. real quick. Sure. Um, can anyone speak on uh, solderless, solderless uh, electronics? I cannot. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of that out there these days. Um, Is this I stuff that comes with quiz, quick disconnects? Or? Yeah, so I think it's Seymour Duncan and DiMarzio both make volume knobs and tone knobs, although really those are the same thing. Just depends on how you wire them. Right. Um, but they make potentiometers that have a little circuit board on the back, and you just screw the oh, wires down. Oh, I see. OK. So I haven't used those. I, I like solder. Uh, I, I like don't like solder. I would love to use something like that. If, if there's an easier way to connect pickups, having tried and failed, uh, particularly, I'm I'm all for. I've never understood why there isn't a, a universal standard like those Molex things that you were talking about. That is, you would wire the uh, the the wires that come out of each side of this equation to a standard size plug, and then you just plug the two parts of that plug in. Yeah. Um, it's super easy, and it would not be hard to create a universal industry standard. And yet, we we don't have one. And it how when was guitar invented? Like you know. The guitars as you know them were like early 50s designs, and we're still wiring them up right. well, very much the if, same way. If we go back to, to this cam here, each one of these pickups has different color wires coming out. Right, there's a white and a black, there's a red and a black, there's a blue and a black. Blue and a black. Like, OK, so black is always ground, and colored's hot, I guess. But right, you don't know, but it, like there's a clue. If you're used to working with electronics, black is usually ground. This yeah. is the thing that makes sure that you don't get shocked. Unless it's hot and green is ground. I have seen that. Or um, like sometimes red is hot, 
basically every pickup manufacturer has their own color coding. It's the stupidest thing. I, I've actually looked out there when I was buying some Seymour Duncan pickups. I'm like, well, wait a minute, what is it on Seymour versus what it is on DiMarzio versus what it is on Lace? Because I had some Lace pickups. Yeah, and they're all so, different. Yeah, make sure that if you are messing around with your pickups, uh, you can usually find wiring diagrams. Certainly the big manufacturers that we're talking about, they do offer downloadable PDFs and wiring uh, diagrams. And then of course, there's a subset of, uh, of hobbyists out there who also make their own custom wiring things. Uh, one of my guitars is three pickups, and I've got it uh, through, uh, through Greg. He wired it so that I could do uh, it's a Les Paul style toggle switch. So I've got rhythm and lead and then uh -huh. both rhythm and lead. But I also have a middle pickup that's on its own independent volume control. Mm -hmm. So I can dial in that P90 as much or as little as I want. I can have all three. I can have just any one of them. There's a lot of things you can do, but it's really important that you figure out all pickups are not created equal. All the, all the colors do not mean the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and you save yourself a lot of hassle. And again, there's a lot of people who, are, who take pride in knowing this stuff on the internet. You can find those guitar communities where they'll say, "Oh yeah, no, for that pickup, I've got that pickup. Here's the diagram." Yeah. Or you know. Yeah, I've you? I've gotten to the point where I don't even use wiring diagrams. Really? Yeah. I, what do you do? Just, you just figure it out, or yeah, you just I recognize just, the designs? I just have figured out how to make it all work. Um, I and that really comes from having started to build the pickups myself. I understand what all the different wires do. Um, so. Real quick, if you're just joining us, you've stumbled onto Rocksmith Encore. Uh, this is a bonus stream that the Rocksmith team does uh, generally once a month, but this is part one of a three-part special series that we're going to be doing every other week uh, for the next month. This is Brian Pody. He is one of our note trackers, one of oh. our engineers, but also somebody who, for fun, builds guitars in his spare time. So uh, now that we've got a nice new studio with better equipment and we can show you some of this stuff up close, he has volunteered to disassemble, reassemble, upgrade, and then set up a guitar over the course of the next three Rocksmith Encore shows. So if you have questions, please uh, use the at Rocksmith game. Both Travis and I are trying to monitor that in real time. Travis is doing a better job of that. And Travis has a question now. Uh, Hi, Travis. Yes. Uh, hello. It is good to see everyone. This is the back of Travis's um, head at the Wheels of Steel. Yeah, the back of that my head button. in the front of our console. <laughs> um, so uh, the first question is um, uh, active pickups, 9 volts uh, or 18 volt. Which one is worth it? Uh, Let's step back. What's an active pickup? An active pickup is a, usually a low impedance pickup. So like a PAF humbucker is usually about 8,000 ohms of resistance. Sure. It is. Um, something like a, a JB, which is like a hot pickup, is like 16,000 ohms of resistance. Right. An active pickup is significantly lower resistance and because of that, it either has a preamp built into the pickup in the case of like an EMG or the Seymour Duncan blackouts probably also have the little preamp built into the pickup or sometimes like especially on bases, they'll have an outboard preamp that's still in the control cavity, but it's not actually in the pickup. So the pickups will go through the preamp. Um, the big benefit to more voltage is just headroom. You know, you so you can get louder without it distorting. Exactly. So I see that as a big benefit on bass. Travis, maybe you have an opinion on that. Um, on guitar, it's pretty much been nine volts forever. Uh, it's never been an issue for me. It's just one more battery. Yeah, Let's say um, you, Travis. I, I would say uh, uh, the thing about bass, right? If you think about a bass wave, it's 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 not small. It's huge. The waveform is really big, which requires more energy. Um, and in order to have that kind of energy sort of be at its full uh, amplitude, you need more, ener uh, more energy um, to, to initialize it. Uh, and so um, with passive pickups, you actually don't get that true bass response. Like that's what passive does, right? It just doesn't have that output, but right. active does. And so you get this big bass sound. But because it took so long for active to become sort of common, that passive sound became really sought after and became the bass sound. I, I prefer passive, uh, even though I don't get that true bass response. So, yeah, I, it, but it's all different. Yeah, it's, it's totally up to taste and style. Yep. And also, we hear from people from time to time who say, uh, you know, my guitar isn't, Rocksmith isn't recognizing my guitar. And you'd be surprised how often we say, is it, do you have active pickups? 
and they'll say, I don't know, because there are actually some very affordable starter bases that come with with active pickups in them, which means they have a nine volt battery inside the body that needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. And worse, there's no on or off switch. If it's plugged in, it's then that on. battery is engaged, that circuit yeah. is complete, and it's drawing battery power from mm -hmm. it. So you might get maybe four or five hours off of a nine volt battery nonstop. Maybe more, depends. Yeah, probably more. I don't know, I've never left one plugged in to see. I have, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the thing, is that like the next day you come in and your guitar sounds like crap and you don't know what you did, but yeah. if you leave it plugged in, effects pedals are also this way. If you are running mm -hmm. on nine volt within an effects pedal, you plug it in, that's the on switch. So uh, if you are having any problems with, first of all, check your bass or guitar to find out if you have an active uh, a pickup system because you might and if so there's a little extra care in feeding of making sure that you don't leave Sorry. it in and that you're using uh, 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 fresh batteries. Travis has another question. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm going to answer your question quickly and then ask your question. All right. I'm also going to mute that drill. Thank you. Um, so uh, someone asked what about passive bass pickups with uh, a preamp? Um, quickly to say uh, you're always, uh, when you're talking about amplifiers, you're amplifying something, you're making one thing larger, right? If you start with something like a passive signal, you're making that passive signal larger. Um, and when it's, uh, when it's at its source, a passive signal, you never really get that bass response. You can try to feed in more energy to compensate, but you'll never get that like true bass response. So you'll always be amplifying a passive signal. Um, so you'll always have that passive sound, which is what I do, like I do that a lot. Or if you uh, use a preamp for, an upright bass uh, contact pickup, you get the same kind of thing. Um, and then, uh, uh, Dan, maybe you would like to talk about uh, this question. Uh, will Rocksmith extend to uh, include instruments that include a seven string guitar and baritone guitar? Perhaps you can give us a little rundown on that real quick. We don't have the plans to do that right now. Like Rocksmith Remastered, as you know, it does not support seven and eight string guitars. Partly that's because we would have to completely overhaul some of our tech and some of our approach to building the songs. Uh, quite honestly, uh, Rocksmith was devised as a way for people who have been frustrated with other forms of learning to play guitar or have always had this dream and never knew how to go about it uh, to, to pick it up. And quite honestly, six strings are the standard, four string basses are the standard. Bass was not even supported in the very first release of Rocksmith. It took a bass uh, upgrade pack, like an expansion pack, a year later before bass was, uh, was included. So uh, it's not quite is easy. I, I know that uh, people, as you know, seven strings have gotten more and more power, uh, powerful, popular. People like to tune down and get a really thick uh, sound and a chugga chugga sound on some extreme metal and stuff. Uh, and that's great, but we were not really prepared to set that up, and it's not something we can just, you know, slap in there. Uh, we're talking about it for the future. We don't know what the future is going to bring, but if we got the opportunity, would we be able to do something with that? Maybe. Uh, baritone guitars are kind of an oddball because. Uh, they are neither bass nor guitar. They are in that sonic space in between. Uh, currently, if you plug a baritone guitar into Rocksmith, Rocksmith's going to say, huh? So uh, those are specialty instruments, and as such, they're not the kind of instruments that people generally start learning with. So that's why they're currently not supported. Don't know if we're going to support them in the future. Five-string bass also comes up a lot, too. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, getting your feedback on that is important and is stuff that we need to know. But we'll have to figure out if it makes sense to do it and then how we would do it. And then, man, we've got more than a thousand songs. How many of those songs would have to be revised if we added a seventh or an eighth string to the interface? What would it look like? Would we still be able to do multiplayer? Lots of questions that we're not currently prepared to answer, but we will have to think of someday. So, so if you have a six-string baritone, it'll work. It will. Oh, will it? Actually okay. Songs that we track, I think it was Stain, the guitar player uses a baritone a lot. So there's multiple arrangements for those songs, and one of them is the actual baritone. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, it's tuned down to like sharp. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So where are we? If you, can, if you can take me back here, I think. Are you comfortable with that camera? Do you want it up and tilted a little bit more? Or are you. Uh, are we are are we doing good? Uh, it, it seems good from where I'm sitting. Okay. Um, it sounds like we could uh, use Pody's mic, which is good because I. Oh, it. hey. Hello. Oh, huh. there's Pody's because mic. Because of the drill. It's me again. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna dive into these guys. Uh, so what are you about to do? You're uh, connecting the pickups to the selector switch. 
Well, I'm Apparently, guessing. Apparently, I am connecting the ground wires, <laughs> and these bracelets keep getting stuck to the pickups, which do is not, great. Do not solder your bracelets to any parts of this guitar, please. Um, I mean, it might <laughs> sound interesting. Yeah. Like, what's, what's the tonal response of that? <laughs> A reminder that if you are not used to soldering things, it does take practice. As somebody who has been practicing and practicing and practicing, uh, it doesn't take too long to get pretty good at it, but get yourself some kits, get yourself some simple things that you can break or, or just junk that you, you want to start creating points to points. I'm not at a point yet where I can do what Pody's doing right now, but I feel like I'm getting there. You've got solder. Yeah, I, I also want to talk about solder for just a second. And Ben Heck, if you're watching, you'll be proud. Um, so this is lead-free solder. This is what you'll find a lot of places. It's also really thick. And it's garbage and it will frustrate you and make you <laughs> never want to solder anything ever again. Maybe this is why I've been frustrated learning how to solder. This has lead in it. It's amazing. It works now, so much better. Now the problem is that if you lick lead, that's bad, right? Yeah, like I lead is potentially harmful. I don't plan to eat this, so I'm probably okay. I'm not going to say that I couldn't potentially take a little more care in what I'm doing. Well, you are uh, also rushing because you're live on the internet. That's true. So lead-free solder, R-O-H-S, is the, is the acronym I always see. I don't yeah, R-O-H-S is uh, it's just any sort of lead-free electronics. Okay. Um, and you see it on a lot of packaging. But that's the standard solder that you can find in most places now. It is. Um, I don't know where this is from. If Condescendi Brendy is in the chat, he thank you. is. Thank you, Brendan. I stole this from you. You can't have it back. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have said that. You're gonna set him off. Uh, so yeah, keep in mind that uh, how how much should you expect to pay for a soldering iron? We haven't really talked about what kind of tools you're using right. or what you would expect if you want to get into this. So and uh, Travis, Travis also has something that quick. looks like it's very. Um, uh, so there is a difference between the American and English pronunciation of solder. In uh, the UK and British Isles, uh, it's... Um, solder? So solder. Solder. Yeah, which is how you, pronu you pronounce the L. In America, it's solder. Uh, S-O-D-D-E-R. In pronunciation. In spelling, it's the same. Right. Thank you for clarifying that, because I didn't know <laughs> that. And when I was a kid, I called it solder, and my dad's like, it's solder. And I'm like, okay. Dad knows. Uh, but you've got a... You've got a nice little uh, uh, yeah, soldering got, iron here that, that lives in the office. It does. We, we got this one for the office um, at, at my request. Urging, yes. Um, this is a Weller. These are about $50 on Amazon. Maybe you can find it for $40. Um, but it's, it's really good. It's a really, oops, I did something wrong. That was, no, no, I was right. So how I, I mean, misspoke. I'm always right. <laughs> the tip of that is the only thing that's hot, but it's super, super hot because obviously it's it's melting metal. I mean, anything metal on it is going to be super, super hot. To be honest, you wouldn't want to touch this part. Right. It would hurt. I have burned myself many, many times. Um, it's a rite of passage, right? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, it also hurts. But <laughs> this one is, I think, 40 watts? Yeah, it's about 40, it's 40 watts. 40 watts, and you can you can adjust the temperature with that little dial that you yeah, see. Yeah, which is really the... helpful. I've been I've been putting together some uh, some pedals lately, and those are printed circuit boards. And if you crank the temp way up, you are going to ruin that circuit board. I can confirm this. So, I got some of those little electronics kits around the holidays. My wife and I were working on our soldering, and we made little Christmas trees with LEDs in them. And I totally had the soldering iron too high, and we ruined both kits. We yeah. learned, but it would have been better to just go in with the uh, a lower temperature yeah, you uh, rather than waste it to learn. Absolutely scorch things. Yeah. Um, all right. So that... <laughs> uh, Bisco Bid was actually waiting for the uh, the soldering station to appear. He's like, oh, of course, a Weller 40 watt. Uh, it appears. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty kind standard. of an industry standard. Yeah. That's what you're going to find a lot of places. Um, so the fun thing about strats, oh, this will work too, is the, the output jack has to go through a little hole, and then you have to solder it to your volume pot, which is always kind of a pain. 
because you have this short length of wire and you have to kind of sneak in here and you have to try to not melt anything, including yourself. Yes, that's it's, important. As people have pointed out in the chat room, uh, do not, uh, our Cole Sooner says, don't burn the fingertips. You do need those for playing guitar. Yeah, I mean, I think it just makes the calluses tougher, <laughs> right? I don't know if I agree with that. Ooh. All right, so um, what he did basically when nobody was looking over talking about a lot of other stuff. Oh, you did it. Uh, he put the uh, the input jack back in the hole uh, that was routed did, for it. I got 14 minutes. That's all right. You, you, you can go a little bit over if you want, although I know you got to get out of here, right? <laughs> um, and then there's just one wire coming. Are there two wires? One wire coming off of uh, the... There's uh, a, a ground and a hot. Okay. And those are connected to the jack. And it's really funny because this jack has uh, uh, painter's tape wrapped around the contacts so they don't touch... All the black inside the control cavity, and there's the right. same thing in this cavity, is uh, conductive paint. So it's insulation. Okay. So electrical insulation. So if the output jack touches that, the whole guitar goes dead because it just sends oh, everything to great. ground. So they just wa wrapped some tape around it. I've done the same thing. I've also seen foil used in these cavities. Which one is more common? <sighs> uh, depends on how much you're spending on the guitar. Um, on Which do the high-end guitars have? Uh, they will have copper foil typically. Okay. Um, I don't know. A lot of the the insulating paint has become really common. Well, I figure it's it's easy in the factories to just exactly. do an extra you paint just, layer. You just spray it on, and it's there, and it's not going anywhere. Putting the foil in is really labor intensive. Sure. And it will also cut you pretty bad <laughs> because it's very thin metal. Uh, I've done that to myself any number of times. So uh, he's putting in pickguard screws here. Pickguard screws are kind of a standard size. Uh, it's very, uh, you know, it's certainly for a Fender style guitar. You can buy a bag of these 25 uh, uh, generally at a time. Uh, yeah. It's always good to have a few spare one of these around. But I will point something out. Uh, this is sort of specific to Fender because I found this out the hard way. I have an American Strat. And uh, I didn't realize it, but I had uh, the screws are in different positions on different models. Right. So what Fender does, Squire doesn't necessarily do. What Fender America does isn't necessarily the same as what Fender Mexico does. So I wound up with a Mexican Strat uh, pickguard, and then I was like, I don't want to put more holes in my guitar, and I did anyway, and then I wound up putting it all back. So I've got a couple of extra holes. <laughs> you, you might want to double check and make sure that whatever pick card, if you're going to put a custom one on, because that's you know fairly common. As you can see, you can remove all these parts, even without uh, taking the wires off. If you want, you can basically just take everything off and put it onto a new plastic uh, scratch plate. Um, you can go ahead and do that, but make sure that that plate is uh, drilled for your, or your guitar matches the plate uh, in some way. Yeah, so, so a big part oh. of the difference in pickguard screws. I'll flip this over real quick. This one has 11. 1, 2, right. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Originally, Stratocasters had 8. Right. And they were in slightly different positions because there were less of them. But now you get the 11 hole pickguards with the 11 holes as they're laid out here. And you also get the 11 hole pickguards with them laid out in the positions of the original 8 screws plus Three. Right, and I think that's what I wound up doing is I had something that I was like, I, don't, I didn't know. Yeah, so there's lots of variants. Yeah. Unless you're buying something for a Fender from Fender, you're probably going to have to drill new holes. Right. It's just the reality. Travis, you had a hand up. Did you get a question there from folks? Uh, that you yeah, yeah, to... we, we have a, a, I have one bass note. Remind me to uh, is it a low unmute a? Pody later. That was um, a joke. Uh, that's a very good joke. No, it's not. Uh, uh, so we're talking about um, using insulation uh, or a, a, a spray and uh, and foil. Uh, yes. For bass players, it, a, a, a cool, like, uh, very time-consuming hack to help uh, reduce passive noise from your pickups mm -hmm. would be to completely line your pickup chambers in copper tape. Um, and you create a copper um, sort of cage, uh, which... I, I do, and I, I love it. But you have to do it on the back of the pickguard. It's crazy. Yeah, I do um, it as well. And exactly, you have to do it on the back of the pickguard. This pickguard only has the... Uh, unmuted. Oh, all right. Uh, this pickguard only has the foil on the control cavity. If I was going to redo this, I would put foil over the entire pickguard, especially the center part. I mean, you can avoid that if you want. That's just extra. But you definitely want to do where the pickups are. 
and, and this yeah. whole cavity. Just be careful not to accidentally ground something right. to the foil, but do connect the foil to ground. Yes, and um, uh, is, is this a Faraday cage? Is that, is that the, the official term for it? We're getting a lot of people saying Faraday cage. I guess so, sure. I'll if you say that. so, Internet, we believe you. Everything the Internet says I'm not going to argue with the Internet. Before the you put that on, I really want to talk about what we you should. have created here. So uh, if we can get the close cam, that would be helpful. So Brian put in uh, the, the springs and the claw. So this is what we call a tremolo claw. Uh, this is the, the tremolo claw is the metal lab. <laughs> it's really hard <laughs> to do backwards. this when, the, when the, everything's backwards, sorry. So the tremolo claw is the piece you see to the left that has two screws going into the body. Mm -hmm. You can adjust the uh, depth of those two screws and uh, that will give you more or less tension when you put those springs on. The springs have a loop on one side and sort of just like a little, uh, yeah, a, a little uh, peg on the other side. So it just ends there. You stick the, the straight part into small holes that are drilled for that in the base of the tremolo, and then you pull the, 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 uh, the spring so that the little loop goes around one of the fingers in the claw. Now, you can do as many as five springs if you want that to be very, very solid and not move a lot. When we were talking earlier about blocking a tremolo versus decking a tremolo, when I deck a tremolo, I just throw all the damn springs on there. There's no reason for me not to, because that just matches my play style. If you want a floating tremolo, I would recommend starting with three and going up or down to taste. Uh, so you can adjust the, uh, the depth of those screws. That's what he was screwing in before we got muted. Um, so you know that's not. there's no exact science to that. Just make sure it's secure. Uh, but you can go pretty far in, but does does not have to go all the way in either if you don't want it to. Yeah, and well, you're almost certainly not going to screw it all the way in. Uh, if you have like a floating tremolo, like a Floyd Rose or some of the two-point Fender tremolos, um, how far back or forward that claw is determines the tension, obviously, pulling the tremolo back down towards the body, and that has to counterbalance the string tension. So you have to go back and forth, setting the position of the trem claw, and then retuning until you get the tremolo to your kind of desired angle or perfectly flat, if that's what you like. That's what I like. Uh, DK Corby says, uh, is there any advice on keeping the jack from coming loose? The output jack. This is a, a fairly common thing because there's a small hex nut uh, that, that sort of screws and keeps it in place. And the more you use it, it just naturally wiggles out from the, from the tension and from the, you know, the friction of, of plugging a jack in and out. Uh, is there, are there any tricks? I mean, I just sort of check them every couple of weeks uh, and, and just screw them back in. Um, I don't think that there's any real trick to that. Uh, start with a quality part. You might want to, you know, swap the the hardware itself. Um, so hey, bolt-on necks. Let's talk about those. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am surprised to see you using a drill on this. Would you normally use a drill to attach the neck to the body? So I wouldn't use a drill on one of my guitars. <laughs> Oh, all the people that have to buy us guitars in their budgets are watching, Brian. But I would use a drill on this guitar, um, and it's it's fine. Uh, <laughs> this has a clutch on it, right? It's, okay, that's so fine. it's it's not gonna do any damage. I set the clutch pretty pretty low. Um, what were we talking about? Bolt-ons. Bolt-ons. Before that, you were talking about something. Oh, uh, output jacks. Output jacks. Yeah. So I think it's all parts that makes a tool specifically for tightening. Output jacks on... It's like a tiny little box wrench, right? Yeah, but it, it, it somehow else? holds the jack in place so you don't have to take it out. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, so that's a clever little tool that I don't have and probably <laughs> should. Um, hey, I, I don't want to freak out, but this looks suspiciously like a guitar now. Yeah, it, it needs knobs. You yes. still have to put the knobs on. This is where the, the pretty stuff comes in. Also, this is a great time to clean the guitar because we haven't put strings on it yet. Yeah, this and so, yeah, this is where I would argue for conditioning the neck. Uh, some fretboard oil. Uh, lemon oil works. Mineral oil works. Lemon oil is basically mineral oil with a scent on it. Uh, you can get this very cheaply at, like, Ikea if you have one nearby. Uh, mineral oil is usually used for, like... Uh, 
uh, like butcher's blocks and stuff like that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, um, IKEA is a great place for a, it. A, a can will will last you a lifetime, pretty much. Um, but this is where I would say, you know, uh, and we'll talk more about this, I think, later on about how to optimize your neck and how to uh, how to, to clean it and stuff. But uh, before you go rushing to put all the other parts on, uh, why not clean everything that needs to be cleaned, polish everything that needs to be polished before you start putting more I stuff I was on. noticing right before we went live just how dirty this Oh, yeah, this is filthy. I did not... <laughs> I didn't know. Well, you know what? It's, it's real because uh, it some tells me that there's a lot of people out there that have similar looking guitars. It hasn't been played that much though because the frets are the frets are good, but all. there's still this this junk there, that I there see. Is. There's, there's, there's finger gunk. There's finger gunk, and I am on a, on a non-stop quest against finger gunk here. But we'll talk about that on a later show. I, I know you're a uh, like Top Gear, uh, Hammond, May Clarkson fan. I am. Um, have you seen? James May put together the guitar? No, I've heard about this, he, and I'd really like to this. see it. And they edited it all down to an hour. It took us slightly less. All right. It took James May 13 hours. But to it put took together Brian Pody 53 minutes. <laughs> That's pretty good. Of course, it helps that you knew what you were doing. Now, you, were, you skipped several steps that would have stopped me. Like, you were not using a wiring diagram. You knew where to put the the wires when you were connecting them to the five-way switch. Mm -hmm. You did. You know that because you've worked on a lot of guitars. Yeah, and I didn't. I left some of it already wired. Um, sure. Maybe maybe sometime we should just wire something from scratch. We, we can could do that. If uh, there, if if somebody wants a slower guide to this, what's on your what's in your library? I have a few books that I, I turn to, uh, but I'm curious. Do you have any books at all that you've ever used? <laughs> no. You just use the internet. Uh, yeah. I mean, I use the internet now. I, you know, back back in the day, I. You know, use the wiring diagrams that came with the pickups. Wow, you, uh, you're amazing. And <laughs> I just, I just played with it until it worked. I'm Brian Pody. Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I had a lot of like very long nights in the garage at the workbench, being like, why the f doesn't it work? Right. Um, but and you go to bed and you feel like crap, and then you wake up the next day and you go, oh, I know what I did wrong, and then you do yeah, that one thing and it works. Lots of trial and error, and honestly, a lot of that was using garbage equipment, like using the cheap like solder gun with the trigger. Oh, I and, tried that. And you know, crappy and solder, non-lead solder. Nothing, nothing works. None of the connections are solid. Things keep falling off. If you if you start out with good equipment, you give yourself a huge leg up. And that is true. I know. I I went through this all really quickly. <laughs> But you did. You reassembled the entire guitar. You proved that it can be done. And uh, and next time that you join us, oh yes, and don't forget, some of these are push in, some of these are are screw in. I really like the push in bar. The whammy bar uh, goes on last. Just uh, feel free to figure out how it it comes out. And I know it's you. missing a switch tip. It, it is missing a switch tip, but that that you know, uh, yeah. I th I thought I had bought a spare one, but maybe not. Uh, in any case. Uh, when we resume this stream in two weeks, what are you going to be talking about? What what happens next? Now you've you've put it back together. I assume you're going to take parts of it off again. So yeah, we curr <laughs> we currently have a guitar. I was kind of amused when I was thinking about putting this together because it occurred to me I now have to take the entire thing back apart. Yes, you do. And I thought um, that was kind of funny that you're like, yeah, I'm going to take it apart and put it together. I'm like, and then take it apart. But you know, now we we know it all goes back together and where all the pieces go. Yeah. Well, I um, think you kind of knew that anyway. But. So big things, tuners are going to get replaced. Yeah. We can talk about the the intricacies and the particulars of doing that. The bridge is going to get replaced. The bridge is actually going to get replaced with a two-point bridge instead of a six-point bridge. Oh, uh, The okay. two-point bridge being a little higher performance, it's going to stay in tune a lot better because this guitar goes out of tune if you look at it too hard. Um, I've had it by my desk, and I rarely play it because it's always out of tune. So if we fix this and we fix this, hopefully it'll stay in tune a bit better. The other thing that we're going to do, I don't know if we should do in part two or three, it is an upgrade, but it's also part of setup, uh, is replace the nut, okay. which may be beyond what most people want to do, but it's going to make a huge difference on this guitar to replace it with a nice tusk nut, tusk with a Q, nothing ivory. T-U-S-Q, it's yeah. synthetic ivory. It is uh, Teflon impregnated, so it's very slippery. Um, and let's Were you going to change the pickups? Or yeah, no? let's replace all the electronics. Really? Yeah. Gonna, oh, so, so we're, we're losing all the potentiometers. 
All the knobs. The knobs you're going to keep, but the, the potentiometers the behind the knobs. Uh, probably ditch the pick guard because I think we should put a humbucker in it. I'm debating, and maybe we should we should oh. do a poll. Should should we put two humbuckers in it, or should we just do a bridge humbucker? Because if I put two humbuckers in it, I have to route the body. And I kind of just want to route the body out for another humbucker. <laughs> you're not going to route the body live on the air. We're I, not we're not going to let you play with power tools and woodworking live on the air. All right. I'll, I'll pre-record. You can... I, <laughs> I know, Travis is like, oh, come on. Dude, we already have everything plugged into this room that we can possibly have plugged in. <laughs> but you're planning on doing single, single hum or hum, hum, right? Hum, hum, single, yeah. Oh, hum, 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 hum single? Or hum, single, hum. Yeah. Oh, hum, H -H. single, hum. Oh, the, the, uh, the Steve Vai. Exactly. Uh, the Steve Vai uh, configuration. Yeah, okay. so... They're starting a very good song here. That, that would actually get stolen from my kind of green meanie knockoff that's currently in the show. No, don't take parts out of your other guitars. Well... You've got, you said you've got a box full of, of maybes. I do, but I well, only have one hum, single, hum pick card. Well, why don't you do single, single, hum? Because then I don't get to route the guitar out. Oh, all right. Well, whatever's <laughs> going to make you happy, you do. This is your show. Um, I think that's it. Is there anything else that you wanted to cover and talk about? Do we have any other lingering questions that maybe we uh, missed? Yes, I've got a couple. Oh, Travis has several as we wrap up Hello, part I, one. I'm Rock still here, Concord. apparently. Yes, you it's, are. It's very nice. Um, let's see. Uh, Mad Al has uh, a question. I was given a tip by a friend in relation to bolt-on necks. Once you've restrung and tuned the guitar, back off the four bolts a quarter until they click. Retune and tension them. It makes quite the difference to sustain and overall sound of the instrument. Uh, can you guys speak at all towards um, perhaps uh, readjusting the neck set uh, after you've already built the, uh, put the guitar back together and that uh, maybe affecting the sound? I've never heard of that myself. I haven't heard that either. Um, I, there's, there's a lot of voodoo to the bolt-on joint. That's honestly. true. There's, there's a lot of different things that people do. Mom's secret recipe. Yeah. I mean, I, I would be reluctant to back the screws off with the guitar under tension. Because the whole goal is that once, once this is installed, you don't want it to move. Like, you don't yeah. want the neck to, to shift at all from the body to the point where sometimes you'll hear about people shimming a neck because they're putting in slight... Uh, like small uh, strips of veneer of other wood or other materials mm -hmm. in between the neck and the body to make sure that it makes proper contact or adjusts the angle of the neck. So we'll, we'll the point is as tight as possible. So that's unusual ex uh, advice. I've just never heard that. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's re-tightening them, uh, but I guess... Oh, 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 just to sort of... Compensating for something. Huh, all right, yeah, well... Shift. Um, um, and uh, uh, if I can speak, uh, in Upright Baseland, uh, the way we put necks in is through a mortise. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of like weird tensioning stuff that goes into that where you have to make sure it's in exactly the right spot. Um, and uh, there's a whole thing called a neck off upright where the neck actually can come off and you can it's set with a screw and you unset that screw and it starts to lower the angle of the, uh, of the neck and you can actually adjust your action that way with those bases. It's pretty crazy. There are a lot of options when it comes to putting a neck on, a, on an instrument. Um, the last question I think I have right now is, um, uh, oh yes, um, in the springs for the tremolo, uh, does yes. it matter uh, what orientation they're in? Can they all be straight parallel or do they have to have that sort of, uh, uh, you know, sort the, of, uh, the w. yes, the W. Um, so you're, no matter how you put them in, if you want your tremolo to float, you're going to have to end up with the same tension. So if you put them in the W fashion, you're not going to have to screw the trim claw in quite so much because the springs being angled have to stretch slightly further. That's why I tend to do it. Um, I have one guitar where they're straight because that guitar has... Uh, one sec. We've got a problem with a microphone. Uh, oh. Pody, your mic has just gone out. Oh yeah, Pody's mic is out. How about that? Maybe uh, we killed a battery. It's, it's on. Here, here, take my mic. Uh, why don't you grab one of the headsets? Yeah. Grab this guy. Right. And we'll just close out with, uh, with this. Can you? Uh, I hear Dan's mic oh, I'm rattling sorry. around on the ground. I thought that was an instruction. Can you? Yeah. We're can you hear uh, me now? Yeah, we've got Pody. All right. Hi. Um, we were talking oh, we've about. Got Pody, we've got Dan. Hi. We're talking about tram claws and and springs. So yeah, the the springs in the W give you more tension without screwing the trim claw in quite so far to the body. Uh, I usually do it that way for just that reason. 
sometimes you'll have devices in there like a tremel no or some sort of trem setter which make you have to have the springs all parallel and that just means you're probably going to have to screw the claw back a little more it doesn't really matter it's kind of a personal preference thing um, but they should probably be even like you shouldn't do like one straight across the middle straight across and then one at an angle you can i've, yeah? I've done that i mean it you all you just have to have the same tension no matter how you put them in so okay. you're always going to end up at the same spot just in different ways okay because you're balancing spring tension and string tension so however you choose to do it you know make your life as easy as you can <laughs> fair point if that's it, I think that's it. We gotta let Tra uh, Travis go home. We gotta let Pody go home. We got stuff to do. But thank you so much for joining us for Rocksmith Encore. Uh, this is the first of three of these. As we said, we've got two more of these special shows happening on Monday afternoons. We'll do the next one September 11th at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. UTC. So please figure out what that is. But it was this time, but you know, in, in two weeks. And we're gonna cover upgrades. And then two weeks after that, we'll cover setups. So this is all in addition to our normal weekly stream, which we will be doing in just three days time. On Thursday, the same tr Twitch channel, uh, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. as usual. Uh, and this week we're going to do Variety Pack 11. Uh, I believe everybody knows what uh, those tracks are by now. We've got Flaming Lips. We've got Bombay Bicycle Club. We've got Escape the Fate. And we've got George Strait. When we say Variety, we are not <laughs> messing around. We try to throw you crazy curveballs. But we're going to play all four of those on Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific. So please do join us for that. Uh, we'll have more giveaways then as well. Uh, if you won any of our codes, uh, congratulations. Uh, we'll be giving away more codes on Thursday. Thanks to Tawny. She's Black Widow in our chat room. She is the person who took care of you guys so well today. So thank you to Tawny. Thank you to Brian Pody for all of your expertise and explaining everything. Thank you to the back of Travis's head while he's actually boarding. There it is, that beautiful back of the head, uh, while he's simultaneously uh, helping with the, ch the technical stuff in the chat and the technical stuff in our stream. And I'm just the guy that talks a lot. I'm Dan Amrick. I'm the community developer on behalf of Rocksmith. And thank you so much. This is available as a replay. You can slow it down. You can see the intricacies. And you can always reach out to us on social media. We're at Rocksmith Game on Twitter, at Ubisoft Studio SF on Twitter, or over on Facebook. We're facebook.com slash Rocksmith or slash Ubisoft Studio SF. Feel free to ask us follow-up questions about anything here. We'll get you the answers on our social media portals, okay? We're going to leave you with one more random needless plug for Rocksmith, uh, which you <laughs> may have already seen. Did you know that our game is out on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One? Well, that's what this commercial is here to tell you. Uh, see you all on Thursday. Thanks very much. Bye, everybody. We challenged people across the country to learn guitar in 60 days with Rocksmith. Here's what happened. Oh wait, I should probably turn it up, huh? No. <laughs> it actually tracks every note you play. And as you totally nail each section, it gets harder. They've got like hundreds of songs from so many bands. The fact that you're plugging in a real guitar is awesome. I can't even imagine being where I am in such a short time. Rocksmith costs way less than any private lessons you can do. On day 60, I've got awesome guitar riffs that I can pull out anytime. <laughs> I'm a guitar player now. The all-new Rocksmith 2014 edition, the fastest way to learn guitar. Start your 60-day challenge today at rocksmith.com. Rated T for Teen.